If you want to learn how to salvage and repair moth holes in your precious vintage items, keep watching as I'm going to show you how to do it. I recently put the question to my Instagram pals which vintage repair they wanted to see me do. And it seems that moth holes were a problem many of them had. And this one here was the one that was voted most for. It had some major moth holes to repair along the shoulder line. And as they were really large, it was going to be a really obvious repair, especially as they are right at eye level. So I also decided to disguise the patches with a little faux collar that I made from organza to match. So I filmed this in an Instagram story, but so many people found it useful, I thought that I wanted to share it here for you as well. So let's get to it. So this one here has some major holes along the top here, really, really big. So what I'm going to do is actually uh, cover these up and patch them up so they won't fray anymore. Uh, it will be quite noticeable because it is right on the shoulder here. So I'm going to kind of create a little sort of organza collar to sit underneath the existing collar and that will sort of disguise all the holes that will be um, filling in. Uh, so to give you a better look, there are a few little holes sort of all through it here, little one here. The major ones are these ones here. As you can see, they are quite big. So these are what we're going to be covering and then disguising. First of all, I need a little bit of fabric to actually uh, patch up these holes with. This is the hem along here. I'm actually going to cut out some of the seam allowance, but I'm going to do it from inside the hem here. So I'm going to cut out this fabric. So what I'm doing with my little pieces is actually cutting out some fusing. So they're going to have some iron-on fusing on the back to stop them fraying altogether. So I'm going to do that to all my little scrap pieces. Now I'm a big fan of fusible interfacing. So it's got the glue on one side and uh, the weave on the other. Now this uh, is great for holes and anything fraying because it will actually put glue on the edges and stop it from fraying altogether. Now it's not necessarily the prettiest on the inside because you will of course see this sort of thing. But if you really want to stop it fraying and get a bit more longevity out of it, I definitely recommend giving the fusible interfacing a go. So let me show you how I'm going to repair these holes. You want to first uh, put your fabric in and bunch it all up so it's sort of really in firm together without creating any puckers. Pop your patch on the back and then you iron on top. And once that's ironed, turn it over and this is what you'll see. So we can see obviously the interfacing there that we don't want to. So what I'm going to do is actually cut then trim this around to the edge with the fabric, cutting off all the little hairy bits as well. See? Really, really Tiny embroidery scissors are best for this. Now you're left with another hole, of course. So with your little strips, pick one that actually matches the best. So this little yellow flower here. So this bit here matches perfectly and you can nearly, uh, it makes it indisguisable. So next we're actually going to then sew the back of this patch around here, around the edge of the holes. So uh, you can either do by hand or machine. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to machine. Okay, so to start sewing, this is the first hole with the yellow. Now I've selected one that matches as we discussed. Now what I'm actually going to do is do a teeny tiny little zigzag stitch all the way around the edge here so it stops spraying and it holds the two pieces of fabric together. So once you've finished, you can see it's uh, so well disguised there. Turn it over and then trim off all the excess so just trim right around the edges of your stitching there uh, to finish it. So I finished stitching, uh, let's have a little look. Uh, the yellow one by itself would be invisible but uh, this one here unfortunately I didn't have yellow and uh, white and pink patches uh, like it is here so it didn't turn out as well. So you might decide after this step that uh, it's actually fine as it is. I promised you a colour, so what we're going to do next is uh, actually um, shape and make a colour from scratch. Esme, do you remember where I put the organza? I've laid out my uh, dress here 
all flat so you can see the shoulder seam here and I've marked the center back and I'm going to put my organza down imagining straight line through here and now I'm going to pin along here so that it stays tight against uh, where exactly where I'm going to um, cut it because it's a Peter Pan collar so it won't fold over I'm just going to edge it keep it real simple then I'm just going to cut um, a larger area out here the collar I'm going to make for this is just a really simple Peter Pan style collar and uh, now it's just going to be bound on uh, the edges. Basically I'm using this vintage one here as the inspiration. It's still doubled over so two are cut at the same time and I'm just going to trim this around to the shape that I want it until it's right. It is cut here and looking quite good. I still need to edge it of course, but I think I actually like it better with the double layer. So what I'm going to do is actually cut another whole piece here, I'll cut another one to match. Okay, so I've got my collar pieces. I'm actually going to stay stitch the two of these pieces together. Uh, and then I'm going to hunt through this little box here and find a nice bias binding to match. I'm hoping to use a pre-made one, otherwise I'll have to make it. Okay, hold the phone. I was looking for cream binding to do this, but look at these colours I found. I could do it with green, or with the pink, or this yellow as well. So I've stay stitched around all the edges, gave it an iron. Now I do recommend folding it in half, uh, pinning it and just re-trimming to make sure it's even on both sides because it's such a fine fabric and I'm about to now put the binding around the whole edge. Okay, so all finished. So I bound it in the yellow, which I think the color works beautifully. As you can see, our little holes here are completely now disguised. And look how cute it looks. Now I'm really happy with uh, how it turned out and I think it looks super cute. It's a great way to disguise those holes uh, on the, the neckline. And that's this dresser's journey into a new life. I hope this gave you some insight into how you might be able to repair some of your own moth holes that you thought were unrepairable. Give it a try and let me know how it turns out. If you found this video useful, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up. If you want more tips and tricks on sewing and vintage, subscribe to my channel and you can see all of my future videos. If you really want to learn about sewing and altering, go to my website evelynwood.com.au and sign up to my mailing list. I have some really great things coming shortly and you will be first in line for those. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Until next time. That's the journey of this dress here into a new life. That's...